Let's get started with something terrible. Neck lacing is considered one of the worst ways you can inflict pain onto a person. It involves forcing the unfortunate soul into a car tire that's been drenched with petrol, or gas for the Americans in the room. And you can already see where this is going. Light a match, and you'll see whoever fell victim to your ire become a real life human torch. This method of torture and execution was invented in the 1980s during apartheid South Africa. But, surprisingly enough, it wasn't done by white South Africans. Instead, it was a form of punishment done by black South Africans to their fellow people who were thought to be colluding with the apartheid government. I guess stitches aren't the worst thing you can get for being snitches. People still use neck lacing around the world as a form of torture. It's mostly done by military or police cracking down on people suspected of being part of terrorist groups. Now, I hate terrorists as much as the next guy, but torturing suspects is a little too far. What if they weren't part of the terrorist group, but were just in the wrong place at the wrong time? Or they were just set up? And that leads me to the next brutal form of torture, called becoming an Askari. Askari, originally meaning soldier in Persian, is also a term that was reused during apartheid South Africa to describe a defector of the liberation movement that went on to collaborate with the government. So pretty much a snitch. The black South Africans didn't like snitches. Look back to the first torture method to know what they did to them. But what's more heinous about this form of torture is that the apartheid government knew what would happen to people considered an Askari. So, what the government would do is first capture a few political activists that didn't agree with the government's regime. They would wait until news of the activist capture was broadcasted all over the country, so that all their fellow activists could see that their friends were being taken away. Once the journalists made all their rounds, the apartheid government would then, one by one, start freeing random activists without hurting them. News of these activists being freed unharmed was also broadcasted around the country, perhaps due to some insider dealings between the government and the journalists. And all the other black South Africans watching would come to the only logical conclusion. They must have snitched. And thus, you have successfully labelled them an Askari, these freedom fighters that were just released unharmed would now have to hide from their own people who hated them. And then the apartheid government would sit back, relax, and enjoy the show as they watched their opposing movements cannibalize each other out of hatred. This next brutal torture method is still being done today in Africa, specifically Nigeria. Tabai is a form of torture where a victim's elbows are tied together at their back. This, by itself, doesn't seem too bad. Here, try putting your elbows together at your back. You can't do it, can you? That's because putting your elbows together at the back requires you to pop out the sockets in your shoulders. This cuts off blood flow to your arms. But that isn't the end of it. For this method of torture, they also place a wooden block under your arms and then suspend you in the air hanging by your shoulders. To add insult to injury, they can even tie your legs up to your arms as they suspend you. This is understandably very painful to people. Depending on how sadistic your captor is, they might place you over a fire pit, leaving you hanging for hours on end getting burnt at your chest while your joints are pushed on the edge of being dislocated. In Nigeria, it took until 2017 for laws banning torture to be written down, but even until today, that law is still rarely upheld. Officers caught torturing people just get a slap on the wrist or three months off work, why are things like this? Well, because the people who are being tortured are usually suspected of being part of radical groups, criminals themselves, or they're thieves. A video showing two teenagers getting this form of torture surfaced on Facebook in 2019. What crime did the kids commit? They stole 80 US dollars worth of cash. Government officials often look the other way when officers torture people. Some of them even participate in the act. People who go through this form of torture usually end up with nerve pain in their arms that would persist for months after the event, sometimes even being permanent. Liverpool water torture. This specific type of water torture is actually currently being done in parts of Uganda as a form of interrogation. It involves the victim being forced down onto the ground with their mouth wide open, while the torturer forces a spigot into the victim's mouth before proceeding to turn on the tap. This form of torture is extremely painful since it forces your stomach to inflate as it is bombarded with water, and the risk of drowning due to regurgitated water coming out of your stomach is also high. Cases of torture in Uganda have been reported as recently as the year 2022. The worst part is, torture isn't just being carried out by radical groups, but they're being done by government officers. At times, it's even done to journalists who enter the country looking for information critical of the current reigning party. Unfortunately, 
Torture is just another sign of political corruption never ending. This next form of torture is strangely creative. Bell and Soi, aka The Swing, is a method of torture that has been reported to still be used today in Cameroon. It involves handcuffing a victim's arms and legs before hanging them off a metal pole that is hooked to the ceiling. Then, the torturer or torturers start using their weapons of choice to beat the person. I wonder why it's called The Swing. Cameroonians who have the displeasure of being tortured by this method are usually accused to be supporters of the English-speaking militia groups that don't support the government. Now, before you cross Cameroon off your holiday flight list, or any of the other countries that have been mentioned, let me just say that tourists have next to no risk of being put in conditions of torture. They are really good sources of money for the economy of the countries and therefore are going to be heavily guarded by police or security. In reality, most of the torture methods carried out today are done by people from within the same country or towards immigrants fleeing neighbouring countries. The next torture method is just evil. Mock executions are one of the worst methods of torture that still exist today. The process is simple, but the effects are brutal. It involves sentencing a prisoner, usually a political prisoner, to death for a crime they didn't commit, sending them off to the place of execution before putting them moments away from death. The type of execution can vary. They could either be death by hanging, death by firing squad, or worst of all, digging your own grave. Picture this. You're a political prisoner suspected of rebelling, one day, a man comes to your jail cell and commands you to come with him. You are sent out to a cemetery and are then given a shovel. They tell you to dig a grave. Dig, dig, dig. You know the entire time the grave is meant for yourself as you keep on digging. The man who would be your executioner staring you down from behind while he is holding his gun. You dig down until the hole is deep enough for your entire body to be submerged. Then... The executioner points their gun at your head. It's time. You panic, dreading for what's to come. Then, blam. Nothing happens. They fired a blank. You're then sent back to prison. Hey, that doesn't sound too bad, right? All you did was dig a hole. But the psychological torture is brutal. Victims of mock executions often come out traumatised, leading to cases of depression, anxiety, or PTSD. Eventually, the psychological trauma is enough to push people over the edge. Torturers often do this to break down the psychology of political prisoners, to force out false confessions, or to just scare their opposition into submission. Fortunately, most of us won't ever have to experience these torture methods, since they only really occur in places in the Middle East and Africa. But in the Western world, it's not that hard to find people who've experienced something similar. Just go have a chat to an immigrant family that you might have seen around. You might be surprised to find out how much they had to suffer to get into a first world country. If you like this video, please subscribe. Thank you for watching till the end. Okay, bye.